Hi, my name is Helen. Welcome to my Stories from the Art Room. This is episode three of Inheritance, Wooing Woman Wronged, where we are revisiting the infamous and notorious reputation of Queen Clytemnestra. If you would like to view the earlier episodes of this story, please follow the links. Clytemnestra was the daughter and most significantly the heir of a Spartan queen called Leda. Yes, it's that girl who makes out with a swan. Leda means lady and references earlier goddesses like Nemesis and Leto, who would have chased their consorts rather than be pursued and ravished by them. Leda's mindset on queenship looked something like this. Here we have a queen presiding from a wooden throne on a dais with her arms resting on carved leopards. The head here has been replaced. Originally, I think she could have worn a crown that looked like a walled city in miniature, like this one. The bounty of the surrounding countryside, from the olive groves, vineyards, fields and farmsteads, would have been symbolically funneled into the form of the Queen's body, with the city-state on top of her head acting like a stopper on a storage jar. As a queen, Clytemnestra would have held both temporal and religious sway, having imbibed ancient spiritual beliefs centred on birds and eggs. Her clan, the Pelopids, had a swan as their totem, an early form of Mother Goose, who had given birth to the world in an egg. And since Clytemestra had been hatched from a hyacinth coloured egg, she may have believed she'd been fathered the old way by a wary man, a swan, a divine spirit. And so this made her a daughter of a goddess with Tendarius, only her father in name. Clytemnestra's forebearers lived with the ancient system of matrilineal inheritance, where women had property by the law of mother right. A matrilocality or matrilocal residence means female offspring remained living in or near the mother's house, even after they had married, forming large clan families. This system existed all over the world and lasted up to land reform in the 20th century in the Kerala district of India. Sociologists there were worried about its demise as it is a very stable way to live. Women are inclined to study medicine so life expectancy is good. And when a disaster hits a person's life, they could always return to their mother's house. Matrimony used to mean the inheritance of property in the maternal line, the, equi the female equivalent of patrimony. As a Spartan high-ranking noblewoman, Clytemnestra believed she had the right to choose her husband and to divorce if she so wished. In the social system called matrilocality, the Hermanos, the mother's brothers with benevolent interest, the avuncular uncles would be head of the household. They were the father figure to the queen's children, especially the daughter who would inherit and would normally negotiate marriages 
and protect their sister's interests. Clytemnestra's brothers were the Dioscuri, Castor and Polyduces, but they were off doing a spot of sailing with Jason when Agamemnon rocked up to kill both Clytemnestra's first husband and her first baby. So she was then forced to marry Agamemnon, with whom she had three daughters, Iphigenia, which means mothering a strong race, Electra, which means amber, Christothemis, which means golden order, and a son called Orestes, before Agamemnon left to fight in the Trojan War. Before he leaves, Agamemnon insults the goddess Artemis, who is a huntress, by killing a stag in her sanctuary, proclaiming that he is the better hunter. Then to appease the goddess and ensure that he gets fair winds for sailing, he sacrifices his daughter Iphigenia. Now, given how a matricality operates, one wonders about the real reasons behind Agamemnon's actions. Just what did he intend when he returned from Troy 10 years later? Perhaps like me, you now have some sympathy for Clytemnestra's position as queen Next time I will be exploring the point of view of the men in this tragedy. It's something of a cautionary tale about domination in a time of seismic change in religion and the way society was structured. So please subscribe to turn on a notification for episode four, Agamemnon. Thanks for watching and hope to see you then.